So finally, the complete course for the speaking section of the TOEFL. Okay, you can imagine how much people have requested this video. And finally, it is here. So here in this video, you learn everything you need to know about the speaking section of the TOEFL for you to get a 30. Okay, live examples, free exercises, uh, a lot of theory and more. Before that, I want to remind you though that this is part of a series of videos we have for our complete TOEFL course. So we already have courses for listening and reading. So if you want to go and watch them, I'll leave the link in the description below. Okay, so now let's get to business. But before getting to the content, I just want to tell you that if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, you are missing on a lot of things because we're putting complete courses, not only for the TOEFL, but also for other exams, such as the IELTS, the GMAT, the GRE, etc. We already have a lot of videos with information about those exams and we're going to put out even more. And we're building a huge community here. So if you want to be part of it, just subscribe. Click on the subscribe button, click on the notification bell also so you can get a notification every time we upload a new video. Okay, that's very important. So now let's get to the content. So when we're talking about the speaking section, we're talking about the most dreaded section by most international students. Okay, international students, they are really scared of this section, but no need to be actually, it's not as difficult as people make it out to be. Okay, so now before we go into the specifics, Let's go here over the general overview for the speaking section. So the speaking section is by far the shortest section in the exam. You will get four questions, four different questions, tasks as they call them, and you will need to talk in front of a computer. So you will need to record your audio in front of a computer when you're taking the exam, okay? So out of these four questions you get, there are two main types of questions. On one hand, we have the independent questions. On the other hand, we have the integrated ones. Now, let's see the difference. The independent questions, basically they mean that you are giving an opinion. So they will ask you something personal and you will only need to give your opinion, okay? No need for anything else. So basically they rely on your past experience, on your knowledge, etc. right? Now, when it comes to the integrated questions, three out of the four questions you get are integrated. So most of them are integrated. So they will require you to summarize maybe to report or to evaluate the relationship between a source of information and something else, okay? So actually they will give you a reading or a listening and then on top of that you will have to summarize something that somebody's saying or report something that they are saying. So you are not giving your own opinion, you're summarizing or you're reporting on someone else's opinion. Okay, so now we've gone over the general overview. Now we're gonna go specifically over each of the tasks. Let's start with task number one. So, task number one for the TOEFL speaking section. A lot of people think this is the most difficult task. I think otherwise, I think this is by far the easiest task. Why? Because you're giving your own opinion. We talked about this before. This is the independent question. So, you don't need to report anything on anything. You don't need to summarize somebody else's opinion. You're giving your own opinion. So, you can draw information on your past experiences. So, actually, it's quite easy if you know how to do it. So these are the characteristics of task number one. It's also called the personal choice because you are giving a choice between two things usually. They are going to give you two or maybe three, three things to choose from and then you will have to choose one of them and then also support why you are making that choice. Okay, It's an independent task so you will need to give your opinion. You don't need to report on nobody else's opinion and it might suggest two or more options as we said. Okay. So sometimes you get three options, but most of the time you get two options and you will need to choose one of them. So task number one will have certain formats, okay? Basically the questions will come in these ways. So here we have the formats. For example, some people prefer A to B. Which one do you prefer? So they're giving you two options. A and B will be options and you need to choose one of them and then support your choice. Then number two, do you think it is important to do X? Explain why. So that's an open-ended question basically. They are giving you the option to say yes or no, and then to support your answer, okay? The next one, do you agree or disagree with the following statement? Doing X is very important. Again, you have two choices, agree or disagree. So that's an open-ended question. All of these questions will need you to provide reasons and examples to support your answer. Now let's go over the times. So what are the times here? So you get this question and how long before you need to give your answer? So actually these are the times right here for task number one. 
you get 15 seconds in order to prepare preparation time. So basically after you uh, read or listen to the question, you have 15 seconds to kind of take notes, organize your ideas, organize your thoughts. And then you get 45 seconds to give your answer, delivery time, 45 seconds to speak. Now, let me just make a little comment here. By far, the most difficult part is to be able to comply with the time. Sometimes people want to talk too much, so they have problems feeding all their information in under 45 seconds. Some of them, sometimes they, get, they have problems reaching those 45 seconds, so they talk too little, okay? So you need to practice a lot in order just to be spot on very close to those 45 seconds that you need to talk. So, okay, we've gone over the times. So what do you do here? Once you get the question, then we have 15 seconds to organize our thoughts, to organize our ideas, right? We should use this outline here. That's what we need to have. So this is the outline. R1 stands for reason number one, R2 for reason number two. So basically you will need to come up with a couple of reasons, okay? We're gonna see a little example here later on. You need to come up with two reasons why you are making that choice. And you need to state them very clearly. So for example, they ask me, if I like to, to walk or drive to work, and I choose to walk. So my first reason would be because it's healthier than driving, something like that. That would be one reason. Then you need to provide an example. Now, the examples here are extremely, extremely important. Actually, what gets graded the most is your ability to support your answer with a neat example. Your example that makes sense, with an example that is basically very clear, okay? Just think about the listener. That listener, that person, needs to be able to understand what you're talking about and what better way to make them understand than with example. Okay, but that example has got to be clear though. And then you get a benefit. Now, something I have to mention here, maybe and most likely you won't be able to fill this whole outline out in 15 seconds, okay? But you need to have this outline in your head and maybe fill in the components that you, that you can but of course, this would be the optimal outline to have all those components. Most likely you won't be able to have them all, but uh, just have as much as you can, okay? So here we have what an outline would look like. For example, if the question were, do you prefer driving or walking to work? My choice would be walking. Reason number one, because it's healthier. Reason number two, because it's cheaper, okay? Example for reason number one, because I can walk over two miles every day. So I work, my, my place of work is two miles away from my house, okay? And the benefit I get from that is that I burn a lot of calories and I also get less diseases, okay? I'm less prone to getting a disease. Example for reason number two, for cheaper, the car cost and maintenance is too much. So basically we, uh, of course, we are saving a lot of money, right? And num benefit number two, you save money and you also get to spend more time with the family and with friends, okay? Now, of course, when you do this outline, when you are in those 15 seconds, what you have to do is basically you need a lot of abbreviations, okay? So here I'm writing more than I need to, but if I were taking a real exam, this is something you're gonna see later on. When we do the live examples, you need to write a lot of abbreviations, a lot of arrows. I can for example, two miles, walk two miles, that would be the only thing I, I write for example number one, right? Instead of healthier, say health. Instead of cheaper, cheap. Okay? So those are the kind of things we need to do in order to comply with those 15 seconds of preparation, which is kind of short, but you need to practice a lot. So now before we move on to the live example, I'm gonna give you some strategies so you can ace this task. The first strategy would be optimize those 15 seconds. Actually, later on you're gonna see when I, I read the question, when they give me the question, and actually you have the narrator reading that question. Actually, you can read faster than the narrator. The narrator will uh, read that question very slowly. So once you finish reading, you don't have to wait for the narrator to tell, to give you the instructions and say, you can start, you can provide reasons and examples, etc. You can, from then on, after you finish reading really quickly, you can start just filling your notes out. So you actually get way more than 15 seconds, maybe you get up to 20, 25 seconds sometimes. So, but you need to move in quickly. Okay, so read that question as soon as they give it to you. And then after you read it, just forget about the narrator and start taking notes. So the secret here would be, you need to be proactive. You need to be quick. Now, the second strategy, and this is a big secret, okay? Second strategy for you to comply with this 15 seconds, 
would be and something I'm very proud of because most of my students do it and that's why they get really good scores in this task number one. You need to work with something I call universal reasons. Universal. What are universal reasons? Basically, reasons that will work for most of the answers. So they don't depend on which question they're asking you. These reasons will most of the time work. Okay, and if you have those reasons good, at least you will save a lot of time because you won't need to think about those reasons. Those reasons will come up very naturally. So let me give you an example here. One of these universal reasons would be, for example, cheaper, right? Inexpensive. So when they ask me walking versus driving to work, I can say immediately inexpensive. Why? Because I know that works with most of them. So I could say something like, I prefer walking because it's inexpensive. For example, I can save a ton of money if I don't have to own a car and pay for its maintenance. In that way, I will be able to work less and enjoy more time with my friends and family. Okay, so I don't need to think too much about the reason because a lot of people, they blank out and they just start saying, oh, wow, what should I choose as a reason in order to support this argument? So the universal reasons will solve that problem. So you don't need to think too much about the reasons. You have to think only about examples. Another example here, inexpensive, right? Eating at home or eating out. Okay, so if I get asked this question, I can say immediately inexpensive. Why? I prefer eating at home because it's inexpensive. For example, restaurants have to pay for their staff members, real estate, and the infrastructure, passing those costs on to the customers. By preparing my own food, I incur in less costs, and I can use that extra money on some other activities. Okay, so that's kind of inexpensive works with most of those questions, so you can give it as an answer whenever you feel like. So that's a good kind of a tailor box. So some of the universal reasons I teach my students will be this, inexpensive, healthier, more available, less stressful, more relaxing. Actually, there are like over 15 universal reasons we have. And uh, in class, I teach you more of these reasons, okay? But for the time being, these four reasons will work wonderfully with your answers. So if you really interiorize, if you memorize these reasons, then you'll be able to just actually accelerate the whole process and go directly to the, to the examples and that way you will have a problem with time. So now we know what we need to do in those 15 seconds of preparation time. But now how do you give your answer? So in order to give your answer, you need to follow certain rules, certain patterns, okay? So here at Liberty Test Prep, we have crafted a template, okay? So our students use it with a lot of success. So just take this template, memorize it. Maybe you can modify it slightly, a little bit, to fit your needs. But the important thing is that patterns remain. And with the patterns, I'm basically implying that the connectors should remain, okay? Because those connectors are the most important thing inside the template. That's what holds the template together. So let's go here and analyze our template. So here we have our template. This is a reduced version of our template. So it's a, it goes like this. I would prefer to, and then your choice, for the following reasons. First, because it is, and then you stay reason number one. For example, your example number one, thus, and then you give you benefit. Second, because it is reason number two. For instance, example number two, therefore, benefit number two. And if you have time, okay, I mean, that conclusion, that last line here, it's not totally necessary for you to say, okay? But just if you have extra time, then you go and you give the conclusion. For these reasons, I believe the choice, the choice, whatever you chose, is a better option. Okay, so this template would work in real life something like this, okay? This is what I would say, for example. If they ask me between walking or driving to work, I would prefer to walk to work for the following reasons. First, because it is healthier. For example, most studies indicate that walking at least one mile a day is important for your heart and your overall health. Thus, by walking to work, I'd be burning a lot of calories and I won't even need to go to the gym after work. Second, because it is cheaper. For instance, expenses of owning and maintaining a car are huge, including insurance, gas, repairs, etc., and can easily be over $1,000 per year. Therefore, by walking, I'd be saving a lot of money and I'd need to work less, having more time to spend with family and my friends. Okay, so something like that, that's how it would work. That's what you make it work. Study this template, modify it if you want it a little bit, but remember the pattern should stay there, should remain. Okay, perfect, so the time has come. Now we're gonna do the live example. Okay, in this live example, remember, we're gonna listen to a question, 
an open-ended question, then we're gonna get 15 seconds for preparation time in which we should come up with our ideas, right? And then we're gonna get 45 seconds to give our answer, okay? What I'm gonna ask you to do is do it with me because in that way you learn much better. So how do you do this? Remember something, once you start listening or hearing the narrator uh, reading the question, you need to read it first, before. So actually before he stops or before he finishes reading, then you need to start taking notes and coming up with your examples, okay? So you have more time. Then uh, after you complete your examples, there will be a beep and you will need to start giving your answer. What I recommend you do is you stop the video at that time and you give your answer, you record your answer, and then you play the video to see my answer to compare it to yours, okay? So that's the best way to approach this. So, are you ready? I hope you are. So, let's go. Very well, so we're gonna start with task number one. Get ready to take notes. Some people buy food that is already prepared. Other people buy fresh food and prepare meals themselves. Which do you prefer? Explain why using details and examples in your answer. I would prefer to buy fresh food and prepare my own meals for the following reasons. First, because it is healthier, because in that way I can get to choose the ingredients that I put into my food and also I get to uh, choose the amount of fats and carbs that go into my, my food. Therefore, I will have less diseases and also be in better shape. Second, because it is more entertaining, because cooking is an activity that is very relaxing and that I can actually do it with friends and family. And in that way, I can get to spend way more time with my friends and family and have a good time also. So for those reasons, I would choose to buy my food and prepare my own meals. So as you saw, my notes are not too much, but they allow me to remember certain things that I wanna say. That's basically what the notes should be for. There are triggers for your memory. So perfect. So what you thought about this live example? How does it compare to yours? So I hope it was really helpful for you. And now, don't forget to subscribe to our channel to, and also check out our other videos for the TOEFL, okay? Those are gonna be really helpful for you and you need to do that, okay? Because if you're watching this video, it means that you need more preparation for the TOEFL. So, now let's go over to task number two. So, task number two is called the campus situation or campus notice. And basically, it's this is the first integrated question. So they will give you first a reading, you will need to read something, then you will get an audio, right? A listening, you'll need to, to listen to a conversation between two people, and once you're finished, then you need to report. That's the most important thing. Here, they're not asking you about your opinion. In task number two, they're asking you to report what one of those people in the conversation set. So it's very important you stay very close to whatever that person was saying. It's a report. It needs to be accurate, okay? So you need to give the necessary information. You don't need to subtract. You don't need to add information. Just be very close to whatever they're saying. They're not asking you about your opinion and that's something you need to remember at all times. So this is the overview for task number two. It's also called the campus notice. Actually, they will give you a little reading about a campus notice. So basically it's a notice from campus, you know, maybe a course, maybe uh, the administration of the university has decided to do something and they're communicating people. So that reading will be small and you will need to read that, okay? And then you'll listen to uh, an audio, a listening. And that listening, you'll see two people talking. Most of the time, it will be two students, always one male and one female. But some other times it could be any other person from the, the, the employees in the university, right? It could be the administration, it could be a clerk, it could be one of the janitors, whatever, but one person that works in the university. So it's a conversation inside the campus and that conversation will be about that topic you read in the notice. So two people will be talking and one of those people, one of, the, of these persons will be giving their opinion about what they think about that notice, about the change, about that uh, situation that's going on 
with the notice, okay? So you get two different sources, you get a reading passage, the notice, or, or it could be a letter also, and a listening passage. The students and sometimes an employee giving their opinion, always two people talking, two people in the conversation, one male and one female. So now let's go over the times for this task number two. The so times are this. Reading time, you have 50 seconds to read the notice or the letter, right? 50. Then you get the listening time. You need to listen to an audio, right? To the complete audio. Usually those audios are around one minute and 30 seconds long, okay? And then the preparation time, you get 30 seconds to prepare your answer, to organize your thoughts, to kind of uh, prepare your, your speech. And then for the delivery time, you get 60 seconds. So you get one full minute to give your answer. So basically, right now we know that what task number two is about, and we know that we get different sources of information, and we start with the reading, right? This reading will contain a notice or a letter, always about a situation that is going on inside a university campus, okay? So these are the examples of the situations that will be communicated in the notice. For example, campus financial aid office is getting relocated. So the campus is letting the students know, the, the university community know, that they will relocate the financial aid office, okay? Example number two, dorms will not be available during spring break. That's another change they are making. They're making a change, they are making, or there's a problem and they're communicating that to students. Number three, campus bus service will be discontinued. That's another a situation that could be communicated in a notice. And then we also have letters. When we have letters, it's actually a student writing something to the administration asking for something, right? They're requesting something, requesting a change, or they're also maybe complaining about a problem. So the first example for a letter would be something like some requirements should be eliminated from the curriculum. So here you have a student writing to the administration that he or she thinks that there are too many courses, right? And some of the courses maybe are not important or something like that. So then the second example for a letter, more professors should be hired. So they're requesting something. So those are the types of information that you will get in the reading. So now we know that when you have a reading, they will be communicating a change or a problem. Okay, one of those two things. But now they will always explain why they are changing something or why that's a problem. So let's see what these explanations could be like. So for example, in the case the notice says that the campus bus service will be discontinued, they could give you a couple of reasons. For example, many buses are underutilized. That could be one of the reasons they're giving in that reading. And you need to take note of that. Now, number two, in case there is a letter requesting that more professors should be hired, the student might explain that there are several mandatory courses in which that demand is too high. Now, something very important here. You won't be able to read the reading again, okay? So you'll see the reading only once. So you need to take notes. But now, you don't need to take too many notes. No too many notes. Why? Because the question is really not about the reading. The reading is more context. The question will be about the opinion of that student, of the student that will be in the conversation. So the reading is important for you to have the context, but that's not the focus of the question. So just to finish with the reading, once you read that notice, what do you need to have? You need to take some notes, of course. And what notes do you need to take? This one's here. You, you first need to identify the change or the problem or the request. In case that's a letter, it will be a request. But in case it's a notice, you will have a change or a problem being communicated. And then a couple of reasons. You don't need to take too many notes, but again, you will not see the reading again. So you need to have at least this context, okay? A little bit of information. So for example, I could have this info here. Of course, I'm writing here without the abbreviations. Later on, you will see how I really write when I'm uh, doing this with time, in the live example. But for the time being, for you to understand, these are the pieces of information that we're getting down. So for the change or the problem, it would be campus bus service will be discontinued, right? That would be the change. So reason number one, many buses are underutilized because most students live on campus. So that's the first reason the university is giving in order to make this change. And then reason number two, university is encouraging people to use cleaner ways of transportation, for example, bicycles, something like that. So that's the context I need to have before I get on to the conversation. So perfect, now you know what to do with the reading of this task number two, but that's not the most important part, okay? As I've said before, the focus of this question is to report on the opinion of one of these speakers that are gonna be in the conversation. So 
here is what you're going to get on the listening. So on the listening, we've already mentioned that you are going to get a conversation. Conversation between two people, always a male and one female. Okay. So here you have two students on the listening. Optionally, it may involve a university employee. It could be a clerk. It could be a janitor. It could be somebody in the financial aid office. It could be a principal, a teacher, something like that. But somebody who works in that university and one student at least. So you will always get a male and a female and one of them will be giving their opinion. So that's important thing. Only one of the speakers will be opinionate. Okay, only one of the speakers will be giving their opinion, their strong opinion. And that's the person you need to focus on because that's what the question is about. You need to follow the opinion of that person. You need to identify, you need to take notes of that and then you need to report it. That's basically what this question is about. And the audio, of course, is one and a half minutes long, approximately. Okay, so it can vary, but it's around one and a half minutes long. Fantastic. So now how do you take notes for listening? It's a little tricky. So here you have the template for the notes. Okay, so once you have your listening, the first thing you need to do is you have to draw a T. Here we have a T, right? Like a little cross. On one side, on one, the left column, we have a man and the right one, a female or whatever you want. It doesn't, the order doesn't matter. But on one side, you have a male. The other side, you have the female, man and woman, right? And then you need to, first you need to identify which person is giving their opinion. That's the most important thing. Before you identify that, then you need to take all the notes you possibly can. But once you have decided, once you have identified that, for example, the woman is the one with the opinion, then you forget about the man. The man doesn't matter, okay? And vice versa. If the man is the one with the opinion, then the woman doesn't matter anymore and you only need to follow what that person with the opinion is saying. Now, what do you need to get from that person? Well, here it is. You need to get, first of all, the position, whether they agree or disagree. Sometimes the position might be a little bit more complex, okay? And that's something some students have difficulties with. Sometimes it's not going to be as simple as I agree or disagree. Sometimes they could say, I agree, but there's something else going on. So you need to give the full the full position. That's the most important thing here. And then you need to have the reasons because they will always be giving reasons for their opinion, right? So for example, if they agree, they'll say why they agree. Most of the time they're gonna give two reasons, but they could give only one or they could give more. But you need to have those reasons and then they'll give a lot of details about those reasons. And those details are very important for you to speak and to report on your answer, okay? Because if you don't uh, have a full explanation, a full report, then that's going to affect your score. So you need to go into the details here. You need to take good notes. So here you have how this template would work in real life. Okay, so something like this. You have, for example, let's say the man is the one with the opinion. So his position is that the idea is terrible. Okay, reason number one, students use buses to get out of campus into the city. That's the first reason. Details, Campus has the stores, okay? Of course, I'm memorizing here a lot of things, so I don't need to write everything down, but campus has the stores, then I, can, I could talk about it, okay? Reason number two, going green is dangerous for students. That's reason number two. And the details are, it's always rainy and snowy, students might get into an accident. So you do something like that, and then you'll be able, with those reasons and with that information, to give your answer. Now, this is important. What do you do in those 30 seconds? What I would say, what you do in those 30 seconds of it, you need to scratch a lot of things out. So whatever you believe that is not important, you have to scratch it out. Okay, but maybe you've uh, taken notes on the other person, the person who doesn't have an opinion. That, that's not important, you scratch, cross it out, okay? So you don't get confused when you are reading your notes. Also, you need to circle or somehow do, you have to, to put a little mark on the things that you believe are important. So you need to signal when you have your position, signal where you have your reason number one, reason number two. So everything is basically organized for you to go in there and give your speech. Okay, that's basically what you do in those 30 seconds. Maybe if you have some time left, you start improving your, your writing. Sometimes when you write uh, a little fast, right, you're in a hurry, the, <laughs> the words don't come as they should. So you need to give it a little bit more, draw it a little better. For you to not get confused. That's the most important thing. Your notes should be clean so you don't get confused and you don't blank out in the middle of your answer. So now we know what to do with reading, what to do with listening. We know what we need to focus on. We know what we need to do in those 30 seconds of preparation time. Now we need to give our speech. 
and of course we need to be organized so in order to do that we have crafted a template here at Liberty Test Prep we have a template so this is a template for task number two first of all we have the notice or letter here the notice or letter states then the change of, or a problem now it could also be a request okay and this is because of the reasons in the reading okay now you need to go very quickly over these reasons because remember the focus is on reporting the opinion of one of the speakers in the conversation then the man or the woman it's again it's going to depend on who has the main opinion in a conversation thinks that this is a great or a terrible idea okay it could also be a little more complex as i've mentioned before first he argues that reason number one right in particular he mentions that the details and this is the most important thing when you're giving the details on why he or she had that uh, that opinion okay second he believes that reason number two actually he says that blah 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 okay and then only if you have extra time okay if you have some time left then you go with the conclusion for those reasons the man or the woman clearly agrees or disagrees with the notice okay so the conclusion of course is only if you have extra time okay so this is how this template will work in real life so in this case, we have the notice states that the campus has decided to eliminate its campus bus service. So it's a change, right? And this is because this service is being underutilized and it is also important for students to start using cleaner transportation. So that, that would be everything I mentioned about the reading. Then we move on to the listening. The man in the conversation thinks that this is a terrible idea. First, he argues that buses are necessary for students to go into the city and obtain basic living resources. In particular, he mentions that the only store on campus is very small and expensive and doesn't offer a variety of products. Additionally, he mentions that the campus doesn't have a laundromat, a post office, or any other service. Second, he believes that riding bicycles is dangerous for the students. Actually, he says that as the roads are always muddy and slippery, students might easily get into an accident. What's even more, he states that several students have been injured in the past. So that's how this template would work, okay? So just analyze it on your own, study it, and most important of all, remember it. Perfect, so before we move to the live example, let me give you some strategies for this task number two. So strategy number one is, this is a report. Remember, that's the most important thing. That's very different from task number one. It's a report. What does it mean to be a report? First of all, they are not asking you about your opinion. Okay, so if you give a report in which it sounds like you're adding information to whatever that per the person in the conversation said, that's not good. That's going to affect your score. In the same way, if uh, your report sounds like it's missing on too many details, that's bad because that's not an accurate report. So in summary, you don't want to add information because in that case you'd be lying. That report wouldn't be accurate. Nor you want to miss on too much information. So you want to give a very accurate report something that is as close as possible. Of course, you're going to miss on some details. That's normal. But you should have all the reasons, and then you should have most of the important details. There are some details that you're going to miss on. Okay, that's fine. As long as they are not important, that's not a problem. So that's the first strategy. Strategy number two. Remember, here you should focus only on one speaker. Out of those two people in the conversation, only one of them will be giving his or her opinion. So you should follow that person, you should take notes on what he or she is saying and then report on that person only. The other person does not matter, that's just for context, okay? So here you should focus only on one person. That's the most important thing you should keep in mind. Strategy number three, and we've mentioned this several times now, the reading doesn't matter too much. The reading is just for context and you should mention, you should talk about it, yeah, maybe for 10, 15 seconds out of the 60 seconds. But most of your talk, most of your answer should be about the conversation and about the opinion of the person that you need to, to report on. If you start talking too much about the reading, then you are not answering the question. You are not completing this task because this task is about reporting the opinion of the person that is in the conversation. So perfect. Now time has come and we are going to do the live example again. I want you to do it with me. So first you're going to read a notice. Right, for 50 seconds, let's remember the times. Then you're gonna get an audio 
for a minute and a half almost, I'm also going to listen to that audio, then we're going to get 30 seconds of preparation time in which we should scratch things out, label things like, for example, everything that goes in the template, right? The reason, the position, the details, etc. And then we get 60 seconds, one full minute to give our answer, okay? Before I give my answer, what I'm going to ask you to do is stop the video. Okay, stop the video and give your own answer, record your own answer and then play the video back so you can listen to my answer. Okay, and then compare both answers and see how you're doing, okay? So you ready? Yes, you better be. Okay, let's go. Okay, now let's go and do task number two. Get ready to take notes. Now listen to two students discussing the article. Hey, did you read about this plan? Yeah, and I think it's a really great idea. Why is that? Well, a lot of new students really need this. I mean, it's not just about getting extra help with the course material, they'll probably also get information about things like taking notes or the best way to study for exams. Yeah. I barely even knew how to do those things when I first came here. Neither did I. So these are things most students wind up having to learn on their own at first. That's why so many of them have a hard time. And it's probably good that they can work with somebody who has the same interests. Right. That would be a real advantage. To get information about the classes you're gonna need to take from somebody who has already taken those classes and they could recommend professors and tell you who the best advisors in the department are, things like that. I see what you mean. So new students could get access to information about the program from another student's point of view. Exactly. The woman expresses her opinion about the university's plan. Briefly summarize the plan, then state her opinion about the plan, and explain the reasons she gives for holding that opinion. The announcement states that the university is implementing a free tutoring program for first-year students because this will help these students with their academic coursework and also because this will allow them to get in touch with a tutor in the same major. The woman in the listening passage thinks that this is a great idea for two reasons. First, because students, especially during their first year, need a lot of help. And not only on their coursework or for their coursework, but also in order to, for example, learn other things such as taking notes and preparing for exams. Normally, students have to figure those things out on their own. And second, because she believes that getting in touch with a tutor that is in the same major is a huge advantage for students because these tutors can get to recommend several things, uh, such as courses and advisors, because they have already gone through all this process. So that's the way we give our answer. So tax number two is a little complex maybe, but focus here on two things. So having the template down really good and also on a reporting, also on mentioning what the, the speaker says, not too much on the reading, that's key. 
Okay, okay, so that's been the live example for task number two. So how you did with it? I wanna know how you did with it. So put it in the comments below and tell me how you did with it, what, what's your appreciation, what things you struggle with, if it was easy for you, was difficult, how you doing, okay? So now let's move on to task number three. Okay, so now we go to task number three. Task number three is very similar to number two. You're gonna get a reading and then you're gonna listen to a talk, okay? Now, what's the difference though? That reading is not gonna be a notice anymore. That reading will contain a little academic article, okay? So an academic article, a short excerpt from an academic article, it will contain a definition of something. For example, in the reading, the, the author of the reading will be discussing about AI, artificial intelligence, or something like that. And then, after reading that definition and those, those concepts, then you move on to the listening, and on the listening, there will be a professor in a class, like a lecture, explaining something about that concept. So he will be referring to the reading, and maybe he will be providing more information. Sometimes he will be uh, discussing that information, sometimes he will be disputing that information. So the relationship could vary, but the thing is that that professor in that lecture will be adding information to the reading. So you, what you need to do is you need to report and especially evaluate the relationship. How is that professor, how is that information that is given by the professor connected to the information that was given by the reading? For example, the professor is giving more examples. Maybe the professor is giving an update etc okay so that's the most important thing and you will talk for 60 seconds so here we have the main overview for task number three so task number three is called general specific it's an integrated task again you will need to report a professor's clarification on an academic subject again it's not about your opinion okay so sources are two the reading passage that will contain a short academic article and then a listening passage that will be a lecture now let's go and see the times that you have for this task. So as far as the times you have for this task, you have the same times as you had for task number two. Okay, so in order to read the short academic article, you have 50 seconds. Then you will get a listening passage of about one minute and 30 seconds. Okay, that's an approximation, okay? You have 30 seconds of preparation time for you to organize your thoughts, to kind of clarify your notes and then you will need to give your answer for 60 seconds, one full minute. So just to talk a little bit about the reading, the reading will contain an academic topic and it will introduce the definition of a concept, okay? So some examples could be these ones. A reading that describes the concept of sleep and then gives you two theories of why people sleep. For example, the two theories the reading gives you are tiredness and boredom. Then another example would be a reading that introduces the concept of AI. Okay, and gives you two new developments about it. Driverless cars and drones. And then a third example would be a reading that discusses the concept of cryptocurrency and gives you two advantages of it. International transactions and independency from central banks. So that's what the reading will do. It will introduce a concept, will give you the definition of that concept, and then will give you something extra like advantages, like disadvantages, maybe uh, new information, examples, etc. about that concept. Now, what notes you need to take for the reading, okay? You get 50 seconds to read it. Again, you will not see the reading again, okay? But also, the reading is not too important. I mean, it's a little more important than the reading in task number two. You will need to refer to it. But of course, the main question, the main task is not about the reading. The most important part is the listening. But still, you wanna get some good notes. You wanna take some good notes here. So here we have the template of the notes you need to take. You first need to take notes of the topic, right? Identify the topic, then the definition of that topic, most likely that will go in the introduction of your speech. And then a couple details, a couple details that are given you, okay? So for example, in the case of sleep, let's say the topic I found in the reading was sleep. Definition, a process by which a living organism reduces the amount of energy used and is able to restore its structure. That's the definition given by a reading. Detail number one, theory number one, tiredness. Detail number two, theory number two, boredom. So that's enough, that's enough. Well, I don't want anything else because I won't be able to talk too much about the reading. Remember, this task is mainly about the listening. Okay, so a listening passage. So we just need a little bit of context, a little bit of uh, background information on the reading, but not too much. 
So now let's go to the listening passage of the lecture. In one minute and a half approximate, the professor will be discussing something about that rhythm. And we'll be giving new information on top of that. So we need to identify really quickly what is the professor doing, what type of information he or she is providing. Okay? So, for example, in the lecture, in the case of the theories of sleep, the professor might be giving examples to understand the theories better. For example, he can say, last semester I had a student who fell asleep all the time in the class, right? So that would be an example of how a student could fall asleep because of boredom, something like that. So he will be giving examples from his own experience to show the class better. Now, in the concept of AI, another example, and the professor might be giving details about new development. So actually, Tesla is developing a new car that will go out in the market next year. So that's something that the professor is giving more details about something they've talked before because they already mentioned driverless cars. So the professor is talking or giving an example about driverless cars. So he's giving more details. And then number three, for example, if the reading was about cryptocurrency, the professor could be giving disadvantages, right? Whereas the reading gave advantages, the professor could be introducing disadvantages. He could say that uh, cryptocurrencies are more prone to online hacking and also more prone to a speculation. Okay, so in that case, there is kind of a, a inverse and negative relationship between the reading and the content given by the professor. So when we're listening to the lecture, we need to take good notes, okay? So this is the template you need to follow to get good notes. So you need to have the activity done by the professor. Activity basically is, for example, giving examples, providing disadvantages, providing reasons, providing details, etc. What is the professor doing? What type of content is he giving on top of the content given by the reading? Okay, and then the examples or the disadvantages or the content itself, one and two. Sometimes it's going to be only one, sometimes more than two, okay? But usually it's going to be two. And then some details about it. For example, here we have activity, provide examples. That's what the professor is doing and that's what marks the relationship. That's very important for us to have. The professor is providing examples. Detail number one, students sometimes fall asleep during class. Cozy and warm makes it easy to fall asleep. For example, that's an example he gave about uh, falling asleep because of uh, boredom, okay? And detail number two, let's say the professor also gave another example. As a teenager, he worked as a library receptionist and he liked to party a lot. So there, are, there were nights in which he didn't sleep and he was constantly falling asleep at work. So that's an example on how people can fall asleep because of tiredness. Okay, so that's kind of the notes we need to take for the lecture. Perfect. So now you know what you need to do with this task number three, what they're asking you about, what you should focus on, how you should deal with uh, the reading, what you should do with the listening, what notes you need to take. And now you need to give your answer. Okay, you have 30 seconds of preparation, of course. In, in those 30 seconds, what you need to do is the same thing you did for task number two. Scratch things out, clean up your notes, clean them up. Then they should be neat and nice. They should be easy to read. You should label them. For example, where is re uh, reason number one? Or where is example number one? Where is example number two? Where, where it's located at? And also, what's the uh, relationship? Those things should be clear for you to look at them when you are giving your answer. So that's what you do in those 30 seconds. And now we're going to go to the template for your speech. Of course, you need to be organized. So here at Liberty Test Prep, we have crafted a template. So this is a template you need to use for uh, task number three of speaking. So it goes like this, according to the reading. So then you introduce the topic. For example, AI, right? Is and then the definition. In particular, it is stated that, blah, 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 some details about it. You don't need to talk too much about the reading. That's just an introduction, okay? The most important part is to talk about the professor and the content given by the professor. So then it goes, the professor in the lecture provides the activity, provides examples, provides disadvantages, provides whatever he's providing to clarify the reading. First, he talks about detail number one. In particular, he mentions the detail number two. So detail number one in this case would be the example number one, disadvantage number one, etc., and then more details on top of that. The same thing for number two, okay? And at the end, if you have time left, then you can introduce the conclusion, okay? In this way, the professor uh, provides examples, for example, to better understand the reading, okay? So that's what you do with your answers. So how this template works in real life, here it is. So read it with me. According to a reading, a sleeping is a process by which a living organism restores its energy. 
In particular, it is stated that people sleep for two main reasons, tiredness and boredom. That's quick. We don't need to mention too much information or to talk too much about the, the, the reading. Okay. Then, the professor in the lecture provides examples to clarify the reading. First, he talks about how some of his students sleep out of boredom. In particular, he mentions that every single semester he gets at least one student who constantly falls asleep in his class. Actually, he believes that a difficult academic topic and a cozy environment are the cause for students to fall asleep in class. So that's one of the examples the professor gave. Second, he mentions how he used to fall asleep out of tiredness. Actually, he says that when he was a teenager, he used to work as a library receptionist and that he also enjoyed partying a lot. On some days, he would miss a full night's sleep and would get to work tired. Then he would fall asleep in the middle of his shift. In this way, the professor provides examples to better understand the reading. So that's everything you need to do. Okay, so I hope that was really clear. And now let's go on to the strategies. So the main strategies for task number three of the speaking section of the TOEFL are this. First of all, again, report. This is a report. Nobody's asking about your opinion. Okay, so be really careful. Do not add or subtract information. We've already gone over this for task number two. The same thing applies here. It's our report. Strategy number two here, it's very important for us to analyze and identify very quickly the relationship between the reading and the lecture and the listening passage, right? What is the professor doing? So is he providing examples? Is he providing advantages? Is he providing uh, reasons? Is he adding new evidence? Is he uh, contradicting the information on the reading passage? That's very important for us to identify and label really quickly because that will have to go. We need to mention that when we are giving our speech. That's a big part. We need to identify the relationship between those two. And strategy number three, and this is the main difference with task number two, whereas task number two was more colloquial, was more of everyday speech, right? This is a class. This is academic, right? So they're talking about academic topics here. So you need to have, or you need to keep those terms clean. So for example, when they're talking about AI, artificial intelligence, you change the name to computer intelligence. That's a different thing. You're not talking about the same thing here. So it's very important for us to keep those terms that they used. So be really on the lookout for the terms, technical terms that the professor uses when he's referring or defining certain processes, certain topics, okay? These academics, so here the names of the things, right, the terms matter a lot, okay? For example, the definition of sleeping was the process by which a living organism restores its energy. That was the definition of sleeping. If I would have said sleeping is an activity by which you can get more energy, that's not the same thing. That's not totally accurate. So be careful with those definitions, okay? So remember, these are academic topics we're talking about now, so you need to be careful with the terminology. Perfect, so talk is cheap right now. What we need to do is we need to do an example, all right? We're gonna do a live exercise. Again, do it with me, please. So you know the times are ready, right? You get the reading for 50 seconds, you should take notes. Then you get the audio. You take notes on that audio to the lecture, and then you're gonna be given 30 seconds to organize your notes, to scratch things out, to clean up your notes, to kind of label things. And then you have 60 seconds to give your answer. You should stop the video before uh, the beep and then give your own answer, record yourself, and then play the video back so you can listen to my answer. Okay, and then you compare both of them and that's how you learn. So let's do it right now. Fine, now we're gonna go to task number three. So get ready to take notes.
Now listen to part of a lecture from a biology class. There is a large tropical insect called the peanut bug. Yes, like the peanuts that you eat. Peanut bug's front wings are colored so that they blend in with their surroundings. But its back wings, which are usually closed and hidden, have these bright colorful spots on them and when the peanut bug's attacked, it suddenly opens its back wings and out pop these big bright colors. And that surprises the predator and gives the peanut bug a chance to get away. And then you have a butterfly called the morpho butterfly. And parts of the morpho butterfly's wings are very shiny. They reflect a lot of sunlight. When this butterfly is resting, this shiny part of its wings is hidden. Now morpho butterflies are often attacked by birds. So when a bird approaches, the morpho flies away. And when the morph flaps its wings, all the bird can see are flashes of light reflected from the morpho's wings. Those flashes of light make it very difficult for the bird to follow the morpho. And the morpho is usually able to get away. Using the examples of the peanut bug and the morpho butterfly, explain the concept of revealing coloration. According to the reading, coloration is the process by which animals defend themselves. And it consists in having a bright color in part of their body and then revealing it in order to surprise the predator and then have an opportunity to escape. The professor on the listening passage provides two examples of this. First, he talks about the peanut bug. This peanut bug has front wings that mix with the environment, but has back wings that have a bright color. And then when the predator comes by, he shows these bright colors and has, this, uh, has an opportunity to escape. Then the, the professor also talks about the morph butterfly. This butterfly has wings that reflect sunlight. So uh, normally this, this wings or this color is hidden, but then when a bird attacks it, it reveals its colors as it goes flying away. And uh, the predator only sees the flashes and really can't follow it. So in that way, the morpho butterfly defends itself. So that was task number three. You see that my report was by no means perfect. Okay, sometimes it could get a little tricky to remember these things. What I recommend that you do is get your notes very clear. That's the thing, get your notes clear and uh, practice the template. Okay, but this report, for example, is way more than enough to get a four. Okay, it doesn't have to be pretty, it doesn't have to be totally, I mean, you haven't rehearsed it. That's why it will sound a little improvised, but as long as you can get your template down and you can focus on the task, you're going to get a good score. So perfect, that was a live example for task number three. So tell me what you think about it. Put it in the box below here in the comments. And also, while you're at it, subscribe to this channel, because if you are not subscribed, you're missing a lot of things, okay? So subscribe right now. Now we're going to go to task number four. Now task number four. What is task number four about? It's also uh, similar to the last two, but it has a different structure. It's also an integrated task, meaning that you will not need to give your opinion. You don't have to give your opinion. You will need to report on something you've heard. Okay. The difference between task number four and task number two and three is that you only get one source of information, which is a listening passage. You don't get a reading anymore. You just get a lecture, a listening passage, would be a professor in a lecture giving or talking about a specific topic. It's a little longer than the ones before. And then you need to summarize that lecture in 60 seconds, okay? So in my experience, this is the most difficult out of the four. Why? Basically because people are struggling to kind of cram all that information. Okay, to kind of condense all that information in 60 seconds. So that's kind of difficult for us. But before we start freaking out, let's go to the overview for task number four. Okay, task number four is also called lecture summary because it will give you a listening passage, which is a part of the lecture, and you will need to summarize it. 
it's an integrated task because you will need to summarize a short lecture. You don't give your opinion, okay? You only have one source, which is a listening passage. And then the audio is two and a half minutes long, approximate. So it's one more minute than the other ones. And they're going to be giving more information in that audio than in the previous ones. That's why you need to take more notes. And then you also need to summarize it better to kind of be able to talk about the all the important things, okay? To cover all those things in 60 seconds. Now let's go over the times for task number four. The times are this, you can first get a lecture, right? The listening passage for two minutes and 30 seconds approximate. Then you get 20 seconds for preparation time. Okay, so that's less than in the two previous tasks, right? Because in task two and three, you got 30 seconds to prepare. Here you get only 20 seconds to prepare. And basically in those 20 seconds, what you need to do is again, scratch out your notes, clean them up, label them to know where everything is located at, okay? All the important pieces of information in your notes should be clear. And then you get 60 seconds of delivery time, basically to give your answer the same as in the two previous ones. So task number four is kind of similar to task number three with the difference, the main difference is that there is not a relationship between a reading and the listening because there is no reading. So the professor will just be talking about one uh, concept he will be, he or she will be giving the definition also, and then they will be giving a couple more important pieces of information. So this information could come in the form of examples, of theories, of details, advantages, disadvantages, etc. So, so there is a variety of uh, options, of things that the professor can give you, of information that he or she can give you, okay? So what do you do? First of all, of course, you have to take notes. You have to take good notes. This is very similar to the listening section, okay? Good, neat notes, detailed notes. So here we have the template for the notes. So in those notes, you should have this, the topic, what's the topic that is being discussed. The definition of that topic, usually that will come at the beginning of the lecture, of the listening passage. And then example number one in detail, example number 20. Sometimes the professor could give more examples, okay? So the number of examples could change, but uh, sometimes they are not gonna be examples. Sometimes they are gonna be advantages, advantages, and uh, several other pieces of information, okay? But he will be giving, touching upon two or three important points about that topic. So for example, this is an example of a task number four. So I have my topic, AI, right? Definition of AI, a process that allows computers to be trained into developing their own thinking processes. Example number one, the professor talks about games, right? Details, first person shooting games since 1995 have bots that have a complex system that allows them to make decisions when they are attacking you. Okay, so yeah, Call of Duty, things like that, right? So example number two, self-driving cars. So the details are all driverless cars use an intricate system of AI that allows them to make decisions on the go, distinguishing among thousands of factors. For example, the face of a pedestrian, speed of an object, etc. Okay, so those are the notes that we should be taking. So once you have your notes, once you listen to the listening passage, you have all your notes clear, you need to give your answer and you will be given that answer in 60 seconds. So that's a lot of information. In those 20 seconds you have to prepare your notes, you need to be really careful, kind of uh, filtering information out, okay? You need to stay only with important information and label it nicely, clearly, for you not to get confused when you're giving your answer. Now, in order to give your answer, you need to use a template. So here at Liberty Test Prep, we've got your back. So here is a template that our students use with a lot of success. The professor in the lecture discusses, well, the topic, which is this definition, right? Then the professor provides the relationship about this concept. The relationship could be, provides examples, advantages, etc. all the information that we saw before. First, he says, example number one, in particular, details number one. Second, the professor talks about example number two. Specifically, he states that details number two, okay? And then if you have time left, in conclusion, the professor delves into the concept of topic and relationship to understand it better. So if you want to know how to use this in real life, then here we have it. The professor in the lecture discusses the concept of AI, which is a process by which a computer can learn its own thinking process. Then the professor provides two examples about this concept. First, he says that the newer games use AI. In particular, he illustrates the case of first-person shooters. 
and explains that since 1995, actually it was, right? The enemies in those games have been using AI, which controls their movements and their spawning rates. Second, the professor talks about driverless cars. Specifically, he says that driverless cars use AI, which allows them to make decisions on the go, considering thousands of factors, among which are the face of pedestrians who are about to cross the street, the distance and speed of objects, and the lightning of the environment. So that's how the answer you will be giving, okay? Using this template. So everything clear? Actually, you have to talk a lot here and maybe you have to talk in this task more than in other cases. And this task is a little bit more difficult maybe because the template is smaller and you have to talk more. You also have to talk a little faster because if you talk too slow, then you won't be able to cover all that info, okay? So just practice a lot. Now, to talk about the strategies for this task, besides the strategies that we've already seen in the other cases, right? This is a report, so nobody's asking you about your opinion. The same way as in task number three, you need to use academic terminology. You need to kind of take notes of the concepts and the words that professor is giving, for example, the names of things. Okay, if the, if the professor says first person shooters, you have to say first person shooters. If you don't have that word down, you have to imagine that you are in a class. Yeah, you're in a class, the professor is talking about concepts, right? You have to take notes because those are your notes that you need to study for the final. So you can also put yourself in a situation in which your best friend, your classmate, uh, is sick, right? Has fallen sick and uh, they are not coming to school. So they will need to borrow your notes and you have to take good notes, okay? Because those notes are, um, need to have all the terms that will come in the exam, right? The exam will cover all this lecture. So that's the thing. You need to use academic terminology. So now one very important part about this task number four, as I've told you before, is how you should cover all those, all that information in only 60 seconds. That's kind of tough. But the trick here is just to cut the fluff. There's going to be a lot of fluff, a lot of details that don't matter too much. You have to prioritize certain details, certain pieces of information over others, right? So my recommendation here would be start mentioning the most important parts first, okay? Just in that way, you kind of get them out of the way. So give the reasons, give the examples, and then at the end, provide the details, okay? If you feel that you are running out of time, that you're not covering all the info, that's what you need to do first. Go over the most important parts first, and then at the end, kind of give the details for each of those. In that way, you'll get most of the score because you are providing the most important pieces of information. Okay, perfect. So now let's go to the live examples, okay? In these live examples for task number four, the same thing is going to happen. You're going to listen to an audio for approximately two minutes and a half. Then you're going to get 20 seconds of preparation time. In those 20 seconds, you should publish your notes. You should just filter out all the information that does not matter and stick to the information that is important. And then you're going to give your answer for 60 seconds. Right before those 60 seconds, there is going to be a beep. Stop the video so you can give your own answer and record yourself because you're going to do this with me. Okay? Record yourself and then uh, play the video back so you can listen to my answer and compare, and compare your answer to mine at the end. Okay? And that's the way in which we do things. So, let's start. Now we're going to do a live example for task number four. Okay? So get ready to take notes. Listen to part of a lecture in a biology class. We all know that insects like to eat plants. But some plants have been able to to develop ways to protect themselves from insects. Today, I'm going to talk about some ways plants defend themselves. Some plants have physical features that prevent insects from landing on them. Like the passion plant, for example. Its leaves have little spiky hairs all over them. They're like spikes sticking out of the plant that are so numerous and dense that they prevent insects from landing on the leaves. Basically, there's just no room for the insect to land. And since insects can't land on the leaves, they can't eat them. So the little hairs serve as a physical feature that helps protect the passion plant from insects. All right. But other plants protect themselves using chemical defenses, like the potato plant. The potato plant's able to release a chemical throughout its leaf system whenever an insect attacks it, starts eating leaf. So, say an insect starts eating a potato plant's leaf, that will cause the plant to react. By releasing a chemical throughout its leaf system, the insect swallows this chemical as it eats. 
and this chemical discourages the insect from wanting to eat any more of the plant. How? Well, the substance makes the insect feel full. Like it's already had enough to eat. The insect no longer feels hungry. So it stops eating the plant. So by emitting this chemical, the potato plant protects itself from insects. Using points from the lecture, explain how the passion plant and the potato plant defend themselves from insects. The professor in the lecture talks about ways in which plants can protect themselves from insects. The professor mentions that there are two mechanisms by which they can protect themselves. One is the physical mechanism, the other one is the chemical mechanism. Then the professor provides two examples of this. First, he talks about the passion plant. He mentions that this passion plant has a physical mechanism to protect itself, which consists in spikes on their leaves. So basically, these spikes on their leaves prevent the insects from landing on those leaves, leaving them no room to land. In that way, these insects can eat it. Then the professor gives the example of the potato plant, which has a chemical mechanism of defense. This potato plant releases a chemical as the insect is eating it. So basically, once the insect starts eating it, uh, the chemical makes them feel full and discourages the insect from continue eating it. In that way, the professor exemplifies blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I'm over a minute there, but I mentioned the most important things. So that's why you can get cut off, yes, as long as you've already mentioned the most important things. Now, it would be good if right before you get cut off, you start with a conclusion. So they know that you finished. Okay, so that's the example. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Okay, perfect. So now we've gone over the general information for each of the tasks, but now I'm going to give you some general and very, very important tips and tricks. So the first tip and trick would be complying with the time limits. Okay, and this is a problem I see with a lot of students, especially when they're starting out their TOEFL preparation. Okay, some of them fall short, some of them just run out of time. Okay, so for example, if the time limit is 45 seconds, you need to comply in those 45 seconds. I mean, you, you need to be close, maybe 42, 43, but you cannot be less than 40 because that looks bad. That sounds like you don't want to speak. Sounds like you don't really uh, know how to speak and that's why you are afraid of speaking and that's just terrible for you, okay? And again, also, if you talk for too long, whatever comes after those 45 seconds does not count. It doesn't matter. So you should be careful. You should make sure to introduce all the important pieces of information before that time limit, okay? So what's, what do you need to do then to kind of get to that time limit? Practice. So from the very first exercise for the speaking section of the TOEFL you do, you need to have those time limits in mind. So basically, if the time limit is 45 seconds and you only speak for 35, just consider that that, that exercise was bad, okay? That you, you don't really get a full credit for that. In the same way, whatever you speak over those 45 seconds doesn't count. So if you haven't really mentioned the most important pieces of information up to second 45, then that's not good. Okay, so practice from day number one. You have to be very disciplined. Tuffle, the TOEFL, especially the speaking section, is the most demanding section for you to practice. Okay, it takes practice. So, but of course, practice makes a master and that's something we know. Okay, so, yeah, so practice a lot to comply with those time limits. Tip and trick number two, and this is something I see with a lot of students that makes them get a poor score, okay? When you decide to take the TOEFL, you should have a couple of things very clear. You should have no problems whatsoever with two things, pronouns and tenses, okay? And this is very important for you to report. If you don't really dominate pronouns and tenses, then you just can't report. You cannot give a report. What do I mean with tenses? For example, you should be able to say, she gave her homework to him without, without having to think her, him, it, he, right? Some people say, she gave her homework to he, something like that. That's not good. 
or, or she gave she homework to him. That doesn't work, you see. So you should have no problems thinking too much about what pronoun you're going to say. That takes practice, but that's something that by the time you take the exam, you should have no problems with it. If you have problems with those, then your score is always going to be low. Okay, there is no, no uh, shortcut here for that. The same thing with tenses. You shouldn't have problems saying, for example, the most basic tenses, simple uh, tenses, continuous or progressive tenses, right, ing's, or conditional uh, perfects, past perfect, present perfect, etc. Right. You should be able to say something like, "She mentions that if she would have known that the school would do this, then she would have never voted for that committee." Something like that, right? She mentions that present. Uh, if she would have known conditional perfect, right, that the school would do this, a conditional, then she would have never voted for somebody. So that those should be clear, okay, at least with conditional perfect. Until that point, you should be okay. Okay, if you, start, if you don't have those resources, if you have problems with tenses, past, present, that looks very, very bad. That's just too basic. And you are not going to get a good score on speaking no matter what, okay? There is no like a magic wand for you to, to get over that problem, okay? Unless, yeah, and most of the time, unless you're very fluent, okay? But that's typically not the case. So fix those things first before you even think about taking the TOEFL, okay? That's my main advice. And last but not least, final tip and trick, okay? And I see that a lot of people don't care too much about it and they really should, okay? You should know how the TOEFL will grade you. You know what? What? Uh, how the TOEFL will compute your score, right? What are the rubrics that will make and give you a certain score? So here, it's very important that you understand what they want from you. So let's go over the rubrics really quickly to show you what you need to do in order to get a high score. So basically, here we have the rubrics for the independent speaking. So task number one: How do you get a four? Delivery. Delivery is basically the pronunciation, right? The fluidity, fluency. So it's a fluid expression. No much hesitation. If you start hesitating when you give your answer, uh, 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 eh, 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 that's not good. You get a bad score. Okay, so that you need to practice for that. The speech is clear. So if you start having or making too many mistakes with pronunciation, for example, if you have the word money and you say money, if you have the word microphone and you say microphone, that's I mean, yeah, it, I mean, people could understand that with a lot of effort, okay, and a lot of context, but that's not the way things are pronounced. This is, uh, it's a microphone, right? This is a mouse, not a mouse, right? So you need to pronounce things correctly, so you need to practice, okay? So if you want to get a four in your delivery, it should be fluid. You should have very few pronunciation errors, okay? And most important, whatever mistake you do should not affect the meaning should not affect the communication because this is speaking and speaking has only one function to communicate things you want to be able for the other person to understand what you're saying okay so if they don't understand what you're saying that's bad okay so if you make mistakes slight mistakes because of course in order for you to get a four you don't need to be perfect but whatever mistake that you make should not obscure the meaning should not make it not understandable, okay? So everything you say must be understandable. As far as language use, you have to be able to build uh, grammatically precise and correct sentences, okay? Elaborate sentences using subordinators, using prepositional phrases correctly, using subject and, and verb correctly, etc. okay? Of course, you could have some minor mistakes. That's not a problem as long, again, as uh, it's nothing too, too um, noticeable, okay? Now, topic development, of course, that has to do more with the uh, content. So if they're asking you to report, you need to report. You cannot give your opinion. If they're asking you what the woman said, for example, you need to mention what the woman said, not what the man said, okay? So that's topic development, that you actually answer the question. So those are the basic rubrics for the TOEFL speaking, and that's why you need to care. So pronunciation, diction, Fluency, no much hesitation. You need to build grammatically correct sentences. And then you also need to answer what they are asking you, especially on the integrated tasks. Okay. Now, one good way I always teach my students, if you really want to improve and want to check how fluent you are when you speak, or if people are going to be able to understand you, just do this. 
So you take your smartphone, of you have a smartphone, right? And you go to speech recognition software or you go to Google or you open up Alexa, Siri, Cortana, things like that. And then you just look for something up. For example, how old is the earth? Or how much is two times three? So if the software recognizes your, your speech, right? That means that you are, whatever you're saying is kind of understandable, okay? Now, that's a good way for you to practice. That's something good, okay? And that's something you can do if you think that when you're speaking, your pronunciation and your diction is not too good. Another thing I can tell you, of course, it's difficult to speak English for people who are not natives, right? Open your mouth more. You have to open your mouth because the English language has a lot of uh, by vowel sounds, right? <laughs> it's called by vowel sounds for the time being, okay? So for example, A, right? Let's say I. Other, other languages just have A, A, E. In English, they have several kind of vowels that, and several sounds. So in order to make those sounds more clear, like when you say house, clean, go, you have to open your mouth a little more. So those are some of the things you need to do. But the most important thing is comply with these rubrics if you want a good score. So perfect, that's been the complete course for the speaking section of the TOEFL exam, okay? It takes a lot of practice, and this is maybe the most difficult section, but still something that a lot of people have done in the past, okay? So uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, okay? And give us a like if you found this video useful. Also, leave us a comment. I want to know how you're doing with this, how you're applying this in your life, in your preparation, okay? So that's been it with me. My name is Rod, and we'll liberty test prep, and thank you so much for your time.